Hey guys, welcome to the month of March. This is basically the month of pests here in zone 10A. It's pretty warm, so everything that likes to eat plants is out and about. Uh, I set this gopher trap in the corner because I noticed uh, randomly lettuces and kales were just being pulled away. Here you can see that this one was eaten just from the top. Um, I think it was a garlic sprout and I had no idea gophers even ate those. So I'm a little worried but everything else in the raised bed is doing really well. Here's some snow peas. I have some chrysanthemum. There's also some Swiss chard. The kale forest is doing really well and all the other greens are growing. But I haven't seen the gopher. I just see the effects. And here's the worst one and where the kohlrabi basically was eaten in half. And so that sort of set off my last straw and I began transplanting everything to pots like a crazy maniac. We did get some transplant shock. You can see a lot of the plants here look a bit wilted and it's obviously very, very cramped. Normally you wouldn't stuff that many kale plants into a large nursery bucket. But, you know, I figured it was better than killing the plant or feeding it to the gophers. Meanwhile, everything else in the garden seems to be recovering a bit. I moved all these peas into a pot. They're still growing, so that's a good thing. They look healthy. These are the winged beans, the peas. These are the purple peas. I planted some new ones too. March might be a little late to plant these, so we'll see how that goes. The rest I had started in February. This one has a little bit of a reddish tint. I think that's due to malnutrition, but we'll see if it fixes itself. And then in the next pot, we have the Oregon Giant Snow Peas. That one I started probably January, early February. And so you can see flowers are starting to form and these are self-pollinating, so they should just turn into peas. super exciting and I'm really curious as to how large they might get because you know the name is Oregon Giant Snow Peas so we'll see. So I wasn't sure how I'd trellis this, but I stuck some sticks in and I've just been wrapping it around those sticks. Here is a chrysanthemum transplanted into a pot of shiso. Here's some lettuce leaves growing really well. Now this is the transplanted lettuce. Uh, I tried to arrange the colors in a pretty way, but they're a little cramped. This is some Swiss chard, also doing very well. These are transplanted. And here's what my garden bed looks like now. I left the tomatoes, I left one kale plant, and the flowering tatsoi. So far, the gopher doesn't seem to be bothering these plants. Uh, so I'm just gonna try to let these seed heads form just because I don't know if this tatsoi is gonna make it if I transplant it. It's just so bulky and it's putting all its energy into forming seeds. One thing I learned is that the gopher loves kohlrabi. You can see the roots are too thick for it to sort of pull it down, but it's eating that stem, which is the most edible part of the plant. I also learned that they don't really like radishes, so they've avoided those radishes and just gone for the kohlrabi and even green onions and garlic greens. These weren't the best radishes anyway. I left some tomato plants and that's when I noticed that there was another hole in the corner which means it's now made its way through the entire length of the bed. Uh, I don't think gophers like tomatoes. I tried googling it but we'll see. And then a few days later I see one tomato plant pulled 
into its own hole and dying. So that was that. So the next pest we're featuring is mystery. I think it's either a cutworm or a cabbage looper, but basically it just lopped off the stem of one of my kale plants. Third pest we're featuring is aphids. So you can see the yellow leaf on top of this loquat tree sapling. And then now just moving on to seed starting. So trying to get started with what I can inside, dealing with a bit of a fungus gnat issue. So overwatering when they're dying and then underwatering when I'm trying to get rid of the gnats. Uh, the squash are growing well, really well though. I'm excited to see you know, what finally makes it because I've got a good variety here. And then I also have some more tomato plants started. These are the indeterminates. Uh, the ones I had in the bed were determinates. And then here are some eggplants that are finally growing really well. I had started some seeds in December, those failed. And then these are ones started in January. I did transplant a couple seeds too early in the mid-March. And so I'm trying to cover them at night so they don't frost over because it does still get pretty cold. And then just an update on my carrots. Those are doing really well. It's hard to tell, but you could basically just sort of like feel the top of a carrot and get a sense of how big it is. Uh, and you can see that it's really beginning to form. Now, this is me just testing them out. So I pulled one carrot out and it looks pretty good to me. It's not huge. Um, but the coloring is perfect. It's fairly straight, not a lot of extra roots. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think with carrots, I can leave them in as long as I want or for a longer period than radishes. And these are cosmic purple carrots. I've also been harvesting a lot of lettuce in the sort of cut and come again method. I'm basically pulling out the outer leaves around the edge and using them for salads and wraps and other tasty things. I think I'm also sort of taking mental notes of which lettuces are my favorite. Generally speaking, I'm noticing that the green ones don't taste that well and seem to attract more pests. I'm also using Swiss chard and some of the Japanese giant red mustard leaves uh, to sort of mix things up, just eating them raw and fresh like other salad greens. I realize I could have just bought a salad mix and not mixed it myself, but it's been a fun experiment. And then you see little lettuce seedlings at the bottom. I think those were from seeds that I thought never germinated and then used the dirt anyway. So I'm using the same harvesting method for all my other salad greens, just pulling it out from the edge, leaving about five leaves in the original plant. In some cases, since these are sort of in the baby leaf stage, I'm pulling maybe one or two leaves, but I have several plants. So, you know, combine it all together and you have a nice salad. Those are some white Swiss chards. I think I got a rainbow mix, but somehow only the red and the white screw, and I'm not sure if there were supposed to be some yellow ones or orange ones, uh, but maybe those weren't as hardy. So now I'm just sort of gonna end with a montage of me picking lots of salad greens, because uh, frankly, those are the things that are pretty much ready for harvest now. Last month I had harvested a lot of my sort of winter vegetables and winter greens and so throughout December, January, February I was planting a lot of lettuce and so those are coming to maturity now and the kale plants just continue to produce so that's pretty positive. I think looking forward into April, there's going to be a lot more pests, so I don't know how I'm going to handle that. I think the gopher might still be here, 
and you know the aphids I've been sort of treating them with uh, DIY soap and oil mix uh, the cutworms you know I think eventually those die away pretty early on in spring and then lastly the cabbage loopers I haven't been seeing as many white moths around so maybe they're more of like a late winter really early spring type of thing so we'll see I think you know I might want to go ahead and say early on that I like winter gardening more than spring and summer gardening just because in zone 10a our climate is so mild um, that we can grow everything you need for a salad bowl so we'll see um, but that's pretty much it for now. I'm just going to run through a bunch of these salad harvesting videos. Uh, just for some context, I'm growing. This is red romaine. I also have some butter crunch that looks a bit speckled. I have the Merveilleuse de Quatre Saisons or Marvel of Four Seasons lettuce. That's doing really well. I'm also growing some ruby streaked Mizuna, some chrysanthemum greens and obviously a variety of kales. So I love Lacinto kale. I also have some dwarf uh, curly kale and red Russian jack kale. So a really good mix and all of it seems to be growing really well. So see you guys next month. Thank you.